Way down yonder is the land of cotton, the greatest individual commodity on the face of the earth. Cotton for your clothes, cotton for your food, cotton for the roof over your head, cotton for 10,000 other vital products which could not exist without cotton. King cotton, absolutely vital to industry, to agriculture, to the planned economy of the world. But its history is no cold story of commerce. Cotton has romance. Cotton mothered and fathered the old, old South. Cotton brought the slaves. Cotton fought a war. Cotton created a magnificent empire, then destroyed it. Cotton was the South. Cotton is the South. In the beginning, the people settled the land and planted tobacco and sugar cane. was land. The South was building an empire, but needed a big product, a big staple crop to support it. From India was brought a strange plant called cotton. Cotton was good for the South. The South was good for cotton. The climate was right. It was easy to grow. The market was universal. England wanted cotton. Strong, long American cotton. France and Germany wanted cotton. Italy and Russia and Spain wanted cotton. It sold high, but the South wasn't rich. They could grow enough cotton to blanket the world, but they couldn't market it. They couldn't separate the seed from the lint fast enough. A man could pick 200 pounds of cotton in a day. He could separate only one pound. But the South kept growing cotton and hoping. Clear day in the morning. If we could just grow cotton without the seed, we sure would be rich. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, Pappy. And if we could grow watermelon without any seeds, I sure would be happy. Mm -hmm. Hush your mouth, boy. Ain't no seed, ain't no watermelon. Ain't no cotton, ain't no nothing without no seed. Mammy, I was trying to die. Can I go to bed now? Yes, child. As soon as you pick your shoes full of seeds. Cotton, you is so soft. But it's so hard to get the seed from the limb. Get the seed from the limb. That was the riddle of the South. A riddle solved by an unassuming and unemployed young Yankee schoolmaster under the patronage of a gracious Southern lady, the widow of the Revolutionary War hero, General Green. As a hundred days blended into a hundred nights, young Whitney, Eli Whitney, labored on an idea, startling in its simplicity, couple in its ingenuity, a hand crank engine, or gin, with little wire prongs which stripped the lint from the seed. Whitney was given great credit, but very little cash, for he was buried under the epic importance of his empire-building machine. Soon bootleg gin, first by the dozen, then by the hundred, Mushroom throughout the South. Get the seed from the lint. No longer a wish, but a dream come true. The South was on its way. The South was on its way. Cotton production increased 200-fold in a scant few years. 200,000 pounds exported in 1791. And 40 million pounds in 1803. The boom was on. The empire was getting fat. But on scores of plantations, planters were faced with one cold, hard problem. Now listen, Sheriff. I need more field hands, and I need them quick. You're not the only one. The whole South needs them. And where am I going to get them? Well, where did you get the others? Ah, it's different now, Tom. That African coast is crawling with British men of war. And there's talk up north about stopping the slave trade. Look out there. I've got 6,000 acres of cotton, and I can gin it all. But I can't pick half of it. Do you expect me to let it dry up and blow off? No. Well, Yankee talk or no Yankee talk, British blockade or not. Get me some field hands. So Cotton brought more slaves, brought them from the west coast of Africa, brought them by the thousands, 
black cargo and white sails, lean jawed slavers loaded up and put about for the run home, facing the sea might of the British blockade. guns of John Bull's men of war, and many a slaver went teeming and screaming to the bottom of the deep, or to save their skins and ship, they cast their miserable cargo into the boiling sea. No evidence, no conviction. But they were shrewd, these slavers, and most got safely home, with black hands to dig for the white gold of the South, cotton. More slaves, more cotton. When the land went dry, no one tried to save it. Just move on to new land and there was plenty of new land. More cotton, more gold. Farewell to frame shacks and tin plates. Vast plantations were soon to flower upon the rich southern soil. There came to the south an era of wondrous beauty of moonlight and magnolias and mint juleps, an era of chivalry and true hospitality, a gallant race of devil-may-care cavaliers and their lovely ladies fair. <laughs> British gold for American cotton brought an English influence. Georgian architecture, fox hunting, blooded horses, imported luxury. The South had worked its cotton hard, and now it was the good time. But against the lovely Southern Symphony was a roaring Northern obligato of opposition. No more slave states, the abolitionists, wild debates in the Senate. There was talk of secession. The slave question. Yes, no, yes, no. Not a moral question, said the South, but one of necessity. We need them. Cotton needs them. We're agrarian. We must live on the land. The North has industry. We do not. The slave question. Yes, no, yes, no. The South divided against itself cannot stand. I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. Cotton water war four bitter years of war, and broke the back of the empire it created, stripping it of everything, everything except the fierce pride of its staunch people. Gone, gone with the wind, the land of way down yonder, the land of cotton. And out of its ashes grew neither defeat nor despair, but a vision of a new and great empire. So as in the beginning, the people went back to the land and cotton. The land was black with the rot of war, but the land could be white with a blanket of cotton. For cotton is the South, will always be the South. And so the people faced the sun to reclaim their heritage, to rebuild with their faith, their strength, their courage, to reconstruct with their cotton a glorious nation which had gone, gone with the wind.